Welcome to Social Jumpstart, the cable television program about social media. I'm Mike Walpert. Today's guest is Chris Hewer. He's the founder of Social Media Club, and he's also a social business expert at Deloitte. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me, Mike. Appreciate it. Yeah, I really am excited to talk about uh, Social Media Club and your history in the world of social media online goes back uh, to what we refer to as the dark age. <laughs> yes. So let's start, and I certainly want to talk about the big stuff that goes on at Deloitte, but I also want to talk about uh, about the little guy, about our, uh, about our, our people. The engine of our economy. The yes. engine of our economy. And so give me a little bit of history about how you started out, and then in, in 2006 you started up with the Social Media Club. Talk a little bit about that, will you? Well, it was great to see what was happening actually in 2004, 2005, after the, the bust out here in Silicon Valley. There was a lot of... Uh, retrenching. People started really having a lot of fear of risk. They weren't trying new things. But when we got to 2004, 2005, everyone started getting excited again. And this idea of Web 2.0 came up. Talk a little bit about the, uh, the way people begin to come alive when they start to grasp how they can be in control of their own marketing destiny. I well, it, to even be heard, I think, is one of the most amazing things. And I, I've seen time and time again where small businesses in particular, they'll try to do something, and they don't have a lot of gravity. They don't have 100,000 people who are interested in what they do. Right. So just having one person comment on a blog post or retweet what you're saying or say, hey, I love what you do, I mean, that... If, not, if for nothing else, a small business person should look at it as affirming what they're doing. And if it doesn't affirm what they're doing, that's good market research to tell you to start changing what you're doing and right. start finding something else. So it doesn't have to be a, a gigantic global operation because a lot of times people become so uh, enmeshed in how many thousands of people can I get. But the reality is, is that it, uh, social media is also really well suited to mow your own backyard first. Yeah, you know, one of the things I think that's often missed in, in the small business market in particular is the idea of using social just to service our existing customer relationships. Right. You know, one of the big things about the whole dot-com era that got missed was they made it all about the transaction. How do we sell online and make that done? But the reality is the web and this nature of this, the communications infrastructure that it's created, particularly now through social media, is it allows us to keep better weak ties. Well, by that I mean that, you know, not the, hey, I talk to my mom every day on the phone, strong tie, mm -hmm. but I met this guy on a plane coming back from Stockholm, and it turns out his wife works at Nokia, he's a biker, and he races Audis, and, you know, I still keep in touch with that guy because I see his photos every now and then in my, in my Facebook stream. Right. A, a vast, slightly shallow pool, but still a vast pool. Correct. But the idea of being able to maintain those relationships is really what the web is great at. Right. So we can have people liking our Facebook page or, or following us on Twitter, and we don't have to interact every day. But there's that time where it's like, oh, you know, I need this thing. Are they going to turn to your business? Are they going to have a relationship with you? Are you providing a distinctive service that actually makes people remember you? Are you putting your personality into the work that you do so people know that this is your passion in your life? Here's who I'm about. It's exactly. an opportunity to, to be, because what really comes up again and again and again in social media is real and transparent. Yes. There are other words. Engagement might be a little bit beaten up and used. And I think that's the key. I really got to say, I think it's underrated. I know a lot of people have problems with it because it's been misused, but every mm -hmm. word's been misused. Right. I think the real goal of social media is creating engagement. And by engagement also, because you just touched on something I think is critical. Transaction, transaction, transaction is almost the broadcast model. Sell, 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 big sale on Sunday, never before, Correct. never again. It's a load of baloney is what it is. But if social media was used to deliver first extraordinary customer service, a little bit, and then earn the right through engagement Earn the right to ask for a sale, right? Earning the conversion instead Correct. of demanding the order. That, that's, what a, that's what a business person who's kind of in charge of their own social media, that's where they can really shine, isn't it? Oh, very much so. And, and more so just the idea of being able to say, I, these are the people I want to talk to. I want to talk to people who care about what I care about. I want to talk to people who've come in my store. I want to talk to the people who know about my store. 
And how do we actually create that alignment? Because uh, like a bike store, for instance, I think is really one of the best examples. And here in San Francisco, we have Mike's Bikes. Mm -hmm. It's a great little chain where I bought my bike. Right. I'm a price sensitive consumer, I gotta tell you. I grew up with not a lot of money. So, you know, spending $200 extra on something is a big deal. Unheard of. I did that with my bike because the people I bought it from were so knowledgeable and so helpful that I knew that having that relationship was worth more to me than buying that bike online and, and paying a lower price. So, I mean, really, it's coming back to the fundamentals of business, what we're talking about here, and getting that right. And if we do that right, social media is an incredible amplifier because you have natural word of mouth. People are already talking about how great you are at what you do and how much they love you. Right. If you don't have that, Social media could perhaps be the death of you. Right. <laughs> so there's a good reason for people to be concerned about it a little bit. Yes. But the question is, is, are we operating a great business? And if we do that, then social media is the answer to make it greater, to help increase profits, and to help you better understand and ultimately serve your market. So you take, you take a, 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 a business. Mike's Bikes is perfect because I actually bought a bike from Mike as well. And, and they put a real face on that business, don't they? I mean, they, they use a lot of different kinds of ads, but I kind of feel that I know them when I walk into the store. And I've found working with businesses that that's the real trick. Share, share your passion, share your expertise. That way when people come to you, when they decide they want what you, what you do, what you sell, then they feel like they know you. Yeah. And, and that's not really tough to do, is it? With the tools that are available, um, some people can just do it with a, a, a iPhone video camera and post it up to YouTube. It doesn't have to be a lot more complicated than that. But let's talk a little bit about the, the ease that the platforms have given us, because everybody's on Facebook. Okay, let, let's, let's just leave it at that. Everybody's on Facebook, you have to have some presence there. What else, looking beyond the obvious? That's a really good question. I, I think that you have to go to where your customers are. I, I think the biggest challenge is that there's a lot of people who are putting their businesses on Twitter and they don't even know if their customers are on Twitter yet. Right. So, I mean, as a small business owner, if I'm manning point of sale, I mean, I'm going to look at it from the perspective of asking my customers, hey, are you on Facebook? Right. Are you using it? And so how can we use those little informal conversations as a method of engagement right. to help us understand where they are? What other websites do you go to? Particularly if you have a specialty focus, whether it's bikes or printing or chiropractor, whatever the business might be, that if you start talking to your customers, they're going to tell you what they're doing online, where they're going. Now, we don't want to be creepy about it. We've got to be a little sensitive to that. Yeah. But the idea of, as a part of an actual conversation, discovering that, their customers will tell you where you need to go. And part of that discovery is not a single point of focus of what you're about and me, me, me. But, but in social media, isn't the circle of focus a little bit broader? Isn't it about what we're interested in? Me, the owner, you, the customer, what are, what are commonalities? What, what's the grander? Yeah, the idea of community, really. And, right. and in the beginning, there was a lot of overlap between community and social media. And now I think it's a little more distinct, although I still have difficulty myself sometimes. Right. Um, but the idea being is that there are people who gather together around topics they care about. Uh -huh. So if we understand what those topics are and the language they use, we can use that as the first line of identifying them. If we're not getting anywhere inside the store, we can certainly go to YouTube and see who's got videos on bike sales or bike repairs or other things. Is there actually a good volume of stuff here? And figure out where we need to be. And maybe it's not that I need to create that video on how to repair a bike. Maybe it's that I can share, hey, here's a great video somebody else did. Right. So we don't necessarily need to invest all the money in the lights and cameras and all that stuff. We can certainly use our camera phones for a lot of this. Right. But we can also use a lot of content that already exists because the source of the information is very important. And if you own the content, that's going to help your search engine optimization. It's going to help more people find you. And it's a really important reason why I think you're a big fan of the blog. I am too, because I think that's how people can find you. Right. And it's your brand and your control and your voice, and they're coming to visit you on your property, online, but what have you. And so the idea, perhaps, from the, from the past where you might want to play your cards close to the vest, uh, that's not really so applicable in the world of social media, is it? It's more, it's more of a real open source. Here's what I do. I mean, I find in my own business that I uh, give away as much as I possibly can. And I think that's 
that's a reasonable strategy for people to well, get it, it, information. It, so yes, information. So here's the thing. So um, I think that it's another area. There's two areas where social media consultants really mucked up the world over the last few years. The first one was those who said metrics don't matter. Uh -huh. Because to some people, they absolutely do, and they always will, and it'll never be different. And even though intuitively it's the right thing to do as a human, and we know this, there are people who go, show me. Yeah. And so you Move need to needle. show them. Move, Move the, the needle. needle. A little. Absolutely. Somewhere. Okay. Yeah. And, and the other one is in this sense that, um, we, you know, we, we can just accept that, that social itself is going to drive business. The real point that we're looking at as a second issue is actually people who think it should be all open. The reality is, is we're not saying open kimono, tell them when you're releasing your next competitive product date, right. right? When's your product launch date? We're saying be open in helping people, be open to change, be open to new ideas, be open to hear what your customers are telling you about your business. I've met some wonderful cooks, chefs even, I would say, who run their own restaurants, and you know they just won't hear that their spaghetti sauce has too much garlic. Right. They can't hear it because they've been doing it for so long that they can't hear. They're not open to hearing the criticism. They're not open to changing what they're doing to better meet the needs of the market. Right. And so openness is, is really about that, but it's also to the point you're making, the openness of sharing of information, education. What's my expertise? In fact, you know, that's a core part of our social media club mantra. If you get it, share it. Right. If you know something, if you understand something, teach it. Help others understand it. It'll only enrich you in the end. But that's not saying give away your value, give away your products, give away your trade secrets. It's saying give away this stuff that will help others become richer and will enrich you in the process. So drawing that line between sharing your passion and what you're excited about and giving away the store. Because really the process of sales, if you look at the old real model of sales is nothing more than sharing my energy and excitement about what I got, what I do, what I know with you. And if you get infected with that, then you want what I got. So, I mean, that's selling. So that's also community and connecting and, and sharing of information. And it doesn't have to be complete open kimono, but I've become more and more fascinated with that kind of weird behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> I, have, I have a friend, he's, he, he makes a, a mixer for a sugar-free mixer for drinks and bars and he sells it and he's done a number of videos and he does really good social media, uh, is all over answering tweets and posts on Facebook and this and that and the most fascinating video I've seen of him, uh, from him is how they bake the paint on the glass bottles. <laughs> and it's terrible, it's shot with this Blackberry, it's awful, but it's so compelling because I didn't know you baked paint on glass bottles. So right. it, 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 that's the kind of thing though that you can't really run a metric on, but it does stick in somebody's brain for a long time. Yeah. And how do you build on that? I mean, how do you, so now you have somebody's attention a little bit. You've engage them a little bit. Uh, help me reinforce how critical it is to respond and react. And, and really, uh, somebody, somebody flames, or somebody goes on your Facebook page and has a real problem. Yeah. Do you delete it? Or do you address it? Yeah. Well, okay, so now you've asked like five really difficult questions in a row. But that's Pick good. Pick three. That's good. Well, well <laughs> let's come back to another one of these kind of tenets and challenges social media consultants have created over the years. And that's that you need to listen. Absolutely, you need to listen. And listening is great. And literally the act of listening in many customers' mind is still a differentiator. Because mm -hmm. there's enough businesses who are still doing it wrong who don't even pretend to care. So listening in itself has value. But, but the listening is no good unless you're responding to it, unless you're changing what you do as a result of what you hear. If you hear like, hey, I don't like the garlic, you know, is it, well, I mean, look, if you're baking mama's recipe, then maybe you're not gonna you know, cut back on the garlic. But maybe that's something to take to heart that you could actually offer a, a, a non-garlic version of the marinara. So maybe it's an idea for product development that you actually never even thought of before. Right. Maybe I could make one without garlic and I could make it with olives and we'll make it budinesca, right? I mean, so there's, how do we actually think about that? But the whole point of engagement is the idea of developing a relationship. 
<laughs> and in fact, it's that relationship that really builds a trust in the market that allows your business to succeed, that makes it easier for you to succeed. If you are trusted by the market, your cost of sales is lower, your ability to get ideas from your customer is lower, your suggestion box has a chance of actually having a slip of paper in it, or maybe an email in it if you're taking it via email. But the idea is that we, we have to have that back and forth. You know, I mean, I've known you online for a long time. But it's this back and forth we have together, right. or the space where we create understanding and connection with each other. Right. And from this one sit down, we'll be able to leverage this online again and again and come back to this time together here. Right. So that same thing happens with every customer interaction, with every interaction in the public. And of course, the great thing now is, even though it's difficult for some people to do customer support on Twitter, is that doing it properly in public has a compounding effect that creates its own gravity, that pulls more people in, that brings more trust to your organization. Right, because when you address a problem in a public forum, you're not just addressing the problem with that person, you're telling everybody that hears, that sees that interaction, hey, this is the way we behave. And, and I've seen that happen a time and time again, and I go, all right, I like that, they're paying attention. And, and the small things form amazing allegiance. I was an early adopter of Virgin Air. I think it's, they're great, love it. And I tweeted, and I'll be darned if they didn't tweet me right back. And does that change the world? No, but I've told the story a lot of times and given the choice to fly Virgin over somebody else, I take it. So it's those kind of ripple effects where you're making a, 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 a public acknowledgement that the customer's important. I mean, I, f I felt that from people. Yeah. And, and that's just such a unique thing that social media can develop, uh, can deliver that nobody else, that the broadcast model, the old way of doing it, you can't really deliver that actual we care. No, I mean, you, you, you see an anchor on the news and you kind of have a relationship with them because you watch them every night and invite them into your home right. at six o'clock or whenever it might be. But until you actually meet them and have that interaction, it, it's just, it's not the same. Right. Um, but when we know each other, when we truly know each other who we are, because we've developed this relationship over time. I've watched you with your new baby photos last year. Right. I saw you get a new job. I, and and your, your real part, it, you know, it goes back to the corner store and, you know, business at the turn of the century at the last century, not the one we just entered. Right. Right. And the whole point was it was personal. Real people buying real products from, from other real people yeah. in a town. Yeah, and to your point earlier, I think it's so important I want to come back to, you know, real sales isn't about taking money from people. Real money is about the, or real business and, and sales is about the exchange of value and finding a fit to say, I have something that can provide you this value, satisfaction, use, or function, mm -hmm. and you will benefit from it. And I'm going to help you get it because you will benefit from this. Right. And, you know, far too long over the last... Several decades, uh, marketing has come to mean how I separate people from their money. And because of that, consumer trust has dropped. Then we've had all the other political issues and everything else that's lowered trust in institutions that makes us turn to one another more because right. we can trust each other. But really, marketing has done itself a disservice over the years. And I know many people from the biggest companies to the smallest are working on how do we actually get people to think of marketing in this way of matching our value instead of on taking somebody's money. Right, because if, if you're delivering something that's real and good, that people really want, and you treat them well, then that's a business. Yes. Convincing people that they want something that they really don't want, a, be it a burger or fries or a new automobile, that's a whole different ball of wax. And I think that's beginning to fall apart, but isn't it beautiful that this social media world is beginning to enable small, practitioners, business people who are, are managing to turn their passion into a business to really deliver that to people who are interested in receiving that passionate product, service. Absolutely. And, you know, and the ability to have a, a thriving lifestyle business today, um, whether it's only online mm -hmm. or if it's in a retail storefront or if it's in an office, Right. Um, is much greater today because labor and information and resources flow freely on this new world infrastructure that we call SoClo-Mo or SoMoClo or MoClo-So or what have you. <laughs> but, but the idea of, of SoMoClo, social, what we do to connect with each other, uh -huh. mobile, access from anywhere, mm -hmm. stored in the cloud where we host all the value and all these 
exchanges happen um, is really powerful. And it's rewiring not only society for how we interact with one another as individuals, but it's also rewiring how we operate large companies, small companies, governments, and everything else relative to our methods of communication and collaboration. Right. And this is a very profound time we're in right now. And it's so exciting just to be a little part of it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating. Two, to watch you with, with the social media club background and the small business background and working with real people. And now in the final minute that we have together, we could go uh, another couple of shows in a row, but in the final minute or two that we have together, how does that translate into, into the big global picture? I mean, at, at Deloitte, you're, you're talking to some huge Fortune 100 companies. Yeah, 100,000 plus employees. I mean, Deloitte's 180,000 globally. Um, so it is quite a different thing, but it's about people. And really, it's about putting that focus back on people. You know, we talk about this world of social media creating a connected society. Right. And that affects everyone across the board, regardless of company size. But what we really look at is this. There's been this abstraction of the idea of the brand and all the trust that we put in the brand that the big companies have. And I think that's true, and it's, it's, it's real. But where that brand comes alive is in the interactions between people, the people who represent that brand, whether it's a small business or big one. That's how trust is really built. That's how the experience and consistency is felt. And that's how value is delivered. So whether you're a small business or a big corporation, we have to really rethink our focus on people and how we don't just pay lip service to our people, our most valuable assets, but how we really mean this and how we empower them to act in what they perceive as the best interest of the overall company mm -hmm. and how we orchestrate all of these wonderful people together to make a true symphony. Mm. And, and doing that at scale is a really exciting challenge and it's one of the reasons why I joined Deloitte because I love the idea of being able to work with, you know, basically small cities. Small uh, cities, really? Yeah. 180,000 people? Yeah. That's a small city. So this method of communication, this method of transparency and how to be in a company in the 80s, there were those very cool signs on the wall. But now it's becoming our real life and really how we operate when we're at the top of our game, but really how in the future you're going to have to operate. Yeah, and in fact, and particularly one of the biggest challenges besides the cultural change that we go from being most likely closed cultures to being this open sharing sort of world, um, that's changing just by the age of the digital natives entering the workforce. In fact, one of the big drivers for big companies, why they're embracing this change, is the need to compete for talent. Right. How can we actually have a great experience for new hires so that they're not working on green screens? You know, how can we let them use the tools that they use in their everyday life as part of their work experience? And that's where you see Facebooks for the enterprise and enterprise social networks taking such great traction. But it's also because you see real productivity gains and you see real unbelievable outcomes coming from serendipitous moments that you could never have planned for. So how do we enable that sort of flow of value to happen? And we do that by trusting our employees and empowering them so that they can actually do the right things in the right moments. So we're getting to a point where even large corporations are going to have to draw that line and be more flexible because their employees have a voice. They can't really stifle the voice. They can't make people say stuff. So they have to find that balance and actually build a team that functions in, in a way that's positive for the growth of the company and also uh, positive for the experience of the customer. Yeah. And I suppose, in the mix, the employees are better off. Well, you know, the, the ones who are out front taking the arrows uh, of change, maybe not so much. There's a little bit of uh, work to be done still, right. but it's a great opportunity to actually um, make the change happen and make careers out of making these change happen inside of companies. But really what I'm looking at right now is, is a new concept we're working on for a book called The Engagement Curve. And what it does is it provides the economic rationale for why every business of every size needs to invest in engagement as, as a key activity of the organization and how do we gain better trust in the market so we do get better flow of information and data, that we do make it lower for our cost of sales, and that ultimately we're creating that word of mouth and, and getting the attention from our customers because they care about us as individuals as much as they do about our products and services and our brand. So putting a face on a small business does translate into putting faces on a, on a giant 
corporation, very much in the same way. I mean, we are looking at the idea that in between the social graph and the interest graph, dealing with different audiences across different topics, the companies really need to deploy diplomats at those intersections. Right. That there needs to be somebody who's representing the company's interests to actually be a part of these communities, to not only be out broadcasting our message and telling people what we're doing and letting them be aware of us, but to also be bringing back insights, to understand how they're using it, what they're using, you know, where are they consuming their media like we were talking about before. Right. And all the different things that we can do when we're actually participating instead of trying to exploit. And as, as people, as employees, as people that work at a company begin to participate, I've seen them get prouder. Oh, yes. And it all starts to really work. They're proud to do what they do with who they work for, and therefore, the end result, the customer has a better experience. Absolutely. And you end up keeping a more loyal customer right. who keeps coming back time and time again. Right. And we believe, actually, that there is a switching cost to relationships that's much greater to the switching cost of any software or, or coffee. You know, if I have a relationship with my barista in the morning, even if it ends up being a little further out of the way for work, mm -hmm. when I'm walking to the office from the train or what have you, I'm going to go back because that barista knows my name, knows my drink order, and I have a good interaction and we like the same music or whatever it is. And I'm not just gonna switch that because I have to go to another work environment that's two blocks the other way. Right. So in this new world, uh, we are, I am, I think, and I get from you that you are too, willing to pay a little more, invest a little bit more to have a more real experience and actually get more than just a cup of coffee. Feel like I have a little connection with my coffee. Well, for those of us who can't be the low cost leader on everything, right? Um, I hope we all can believe that because ultimately that is the reason why people will pay for the same good at a higher rate. Right. They're getting a better service, they're having a better experience, and to your point, they feel better about it. And if your point of sale contacts and the people who are representing your company are more proud of working for that company, it's gonna absolutely reflect in the bottom line. And it all starts with social media. Let's leave it at that. We could go on and on. I really have enjoyed having you on the show. Excellent. Chris Hewer, thank, thank you very you so much. much. Mike. And thank you for watching another episode of Social Jumpstart, the cable television program about social media. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.